the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. All you Aki are making your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is Jake is a sitting duck. And this is going to be a continuation of yesterday's lesson. The power is still out here in New Orleans, man. And this, again, it's pitch black. And I just saw something really alarming and it sparked a lesson, man. Basically, you have when, you, when I look outside, I see nothing but pitch black everywhere. It's like it's total darkness. The, the highway pitch black. None of the street lights are on the houses. No lights are on. The electricity still out. And on this street, particularly, there's there's nothing but black everywhere you look there's there's no lights in the houses but there's one house a few houses from mine and it's this jake he has a super loud generator and he's got all the lights on in his house his children are playing he's having a good time and i'm looking at this nigga like man he he really has no idea what time we're in this is this is the absolute worst time to draw attention to yourself here it is everybody in a i don't know what block radius there's there's lights in certain parts of the city but this area here is pitch black as far as the eye can see, except his house. He has the one house where it is just like, it's a party going on. Jake has no idea what's going on, man. He's got this super loud generator. You might you might even hear it in the background of this video. It's just extremely loud. You could hear it from like two blocks away and his lights are on, but he, he's the only house that has lights on in the house. And it's like, I'm looking at this nigga like, man, does he have any idea what a target he is? He's, are you not watching the news? Are you not, obviously you're not listening to the prophets, man. This is not the time to be drawing all of this attention to yourself, man. When all hell breaks loose, you can already tell where all of the degenerates in this neighborhood are going to be headed, man. This, first of all, is wicked to have a bunch of houses next to each other. Let, let me get that real quick. This is the book of Isaiah chapter five, verse eight. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, and that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. And this goes into Esau, really any wicked ruler that buys up all of the property and has people living on top of each other like roaches. This is not normal. The way that we live in so-called urban America, everything we've accepted as normal is completely adverse to the scriptures, man. Every man is supposed to have a plot of land for him and his children. You might have a son. You want your son to build a castle right on your land, man. You're not supposed to live next door to somebody that's a complete stranger from you, man. That's completely wicked. Here it is. You're living next door. You're like literally 12 feet away from somebody that's a different ethnicity, has a totally different so-called religion. Here it is. You got one person that votes for Trump, another person that votes for Biden. You got their, their signs and stickers in the front lawn. They hate each other. They believe in completely different things, but they live in such a close proximity. This is not the way the Heavenly Father set it up. You're not supposed to live grouped up in, in blocks and bunches. And when all hell breaks loose, you can see why. You're going to see why very soon that this is the absolute wrong way to create a civilization. The scriptures tell you, matter of fact, let me get it real quick. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. The word woe means destruction when you read the scriptures. Verse 15, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. Right, and the, the modern day sword is the gun. These people are going to be invading each other's houses, man, kicking in doors, killing people's children, kidnapping people's children, eating each other. All right, when the trucks stop coming in and out of the cities, there's not going to be food on the shelves. You're, guess what? Your children are going to be food, Jake. All you Israelites, when I say Israelites, I mean you people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent. You're the 12 tribes of Israel. Your children are going to be on the menu in that day. And that day is very fastly approaching, man. All hell is about to break loose in the streets of America. And you're in a completely lackadaisical state like you don't know what's going on. Everybody around you is looking at you like food. And you're just, your mind is somewhere totally different, man. Jake, Jake has no idea how to be inconspicuous or circumspect. Let me get that in Ephesians. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Right, you're supposed to redeem the times. You're supposed to know what time we're in right now. You're supposed to be circumspect. The word circumspect means to look around. 
you have the prefix circum, which means circle, and spec, which means to look. You're supposed to look around. When you go outside, you're supposed to take note of your environment, of your surroundings, of the time you're in. Because why? It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're in an evil time right now. We're not in the time of you gallivanting and you being the only person with food surrounded by wolves, man. That's a that's a horrible state to be in. A lot of these celebrities that that have lifted themselves up, that have sold their souls, that have sold their prostate, that have done all these abominable things for money in this world, when the economy collapses, they're going to be looked at as food. There's not going to be you're not going to be able to pay a bodyguard to walk around and protect you while you flaunt your wealth and your riches amongst totally destitute people that have been impoverished. That's not going to happen. In Jacob's trouble, your bodyguard is going to kill you. Your family's going to kill you, man. Every man is going to be against his own brother. Let me get that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Right? In that day, you're not going to have brothers and friends. All right? The men of the Lord, the men of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai, we have an actual brotherhood. We have a body of men in which every single member, every single brick, every single rock in that temple has been preparing themselves spiritually to not behave carnally in that day. Brothers have fasted together. Brothers have long suffered. Brothers have taken trips out of town. Brothers have lived amongst each other. But most importantly, brothers have preached this word together, man. We put off the flesh and sacrifice everything to come together as one body, as one unit, to preach Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai, to all ultimately prepare us for salvation. These people in the world, they many of them have never fasted a day in their life. They've never put off the flesh. They've never thought about any situation spiritually. They don't think about the long-term consequences of their behavior. So when they're put in a situation where their flesh is challenged, they're going to do whatever their flesh wants to do, man. And in most cases, that's going to end very badly for them and their family. So it's very important to take heed and understand what time we're in. Like we just read in Ephesians, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That word redeem means to buy back. You have to buy back all of the time you've wasted in your life being a nigger, all of the time that you've wasted on folly. You have to buy that back by investing in the truth, doubling down on reading, praying, fasting, fellowshipping, doing whatever you can to be a profitable servant to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 19. Verse 2, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Now, when you read Isaiah, the 19th chapter, it's talking about Babylon the Great, the future Egypt. All right, which you can read about in Romans 9, Revelation 11 and 8, Exodus 20 and 2, etc. There's a future Egypt, and we're now living in a, a society which is known in the scriptures as the shadow of Egypt. This is America, man. It says, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor city against city and kingdom against kingdom. And that's talking about all hell breaking loose, man. Every brother is going to fight his brother, every neighbor against his neighbor. That's There's going to be a time where you're going to go outside and just hear nothing but screams. And we're fastly approaching that day, man. You can feel this eerie vibe in the air. There's a... It just at any given moment, a city could just break out in riots. We see that happening with Philadelphia, man. What makes Philly so different from whatever city you're in right now? This could happen at any given moment anywhere. All hell can break loose at any point. This is the racial tension is at an all time high. OK, unemployment at an all time high. This is this is not the time to be walking around without being circumspect. They have that saying, keep your head on swivel. You just have to look around, man. You have to know that any given moment, this could be it. Just everywhere you go, you need to be circumspect and scripture should be coming to your mind. You should understand that we're living in a time of prophecy. You should understand that we're living in the last days. Precepts should pop in your mind. Like, for example, earlier today, I went out to get gas and, you know, I filled my whole truck up for $20, man. That hasn't happened I don't think since I've owned it, man, it's just $20 just filled up the whole truck. And it, I immediately thought of second address. Let me read it real quick. The second address 16 and 21. Behold, victuals shall be so cheap upon earth that they shall thank themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine and the other that escape of the hunger shall the sword destroy. And you can't tell me that's not the time we're in right now. Never before has gas been so cheap simultaneously while the government is planning a mass destruction, while simultaneously there's a global famine being prepared on the earth. This is clearly talking about right now, man. The scripture says many are going to die from sword, famine and great confusion, man. Those that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So what does that mean? Even if you escape 
hunger, you're still gonna you still have to deal with the race riots, you still have to deal with people kicking in doors, you still have to deal with the government forcing people to take the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. They're using all of these things are a culmination of the wickedness that has permeated this society. Matter of fact, let me scroll up a couple verses. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. And the word amendment means to update something or to change something, to fix something. All right, all of you wicked people getting put to death, that's going to fix the earth. All right, believe it or not, if you're not in this truth, you're an enemy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You're at war with your own creator. And so he has what? Scourges sent for amendment. And right now, man, Jake... Jake is a sitting duck. He has no idea what's coming to him. He's walking around. Everybody's walking around in the dark physically. But some of us have been blessed with that light, man. And the light is Yahawashai. It's not a generator that's making you a sitting duck in the middle of the city, Jake. You, hey, man, a lot of you are just going to have to learn the hard way. But as for the elect, Abaratzazada's lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachachwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to the hopeful elect.